Hey everyone, Bill Vensel from Chords of Orion here. Let's get right down to it. On this video, I'd like to show you how to take a single guitar track in Logic Pro 10 or Logic Pro X and use plugins to make it sound like multiple guitar tracks. So I've got a single guitar track recorded here. It is in 5-4. Let me go ahead and turn on the metronome so you can kind of hear the 5-4 as you go along and listen. All right, as you can probably tell, the guitar was recorded direct into the computer through the audio interface. Uh, so no amp modeling, there are no effects, it's just straight on in. You may also notice that it's a fairly low pitch. It is my Fender Telecaster baritone, so I am playing in uh, B minor, so that bottom string is the low B on that guitar. If you were playing standard guitar, obviously you would be in E minor. All right, that's a pretty boring sound, and it is, it does only sound like one guitar. So. Let's start adding some effects and see what we can get. The first thing we're, we're going to need is an amp model. So to that end, I selected in Logic Pro, let me pull this over a little bit, the uh, large blackface amp, which is actually a Fender amp model along with a 2x12 uh, speaker cabinet model. Let's listen to what that sounds like. All right, that's a little more interesting than the dry signal. The next thing I added was a little bit of channel EQ to just roll off a little bit of low end, uh, just to clean up the very bottom of the range. Let's listen to that. Pretty subtle difference, don't you think? But it does clean up the bottom end a little bit. I then decided to add some compression into the signal. Let me go ahead and power that on so I don't forget. And um, if you'll note, the compression, let me stop moving it here, has a fairly fast attack time, uh, 86 milliseconds release, and it's a 2.1.1 compression ratio. Pulled down the threshold to negative 27 dB, and I'm pulling the gain down just a little bit just to tame the amplitude. Let's go ahead and listen to that. All right, so it's a subtle difference, but if you listen carefully, you'll hear that the high, the loud, and the quiet parts are a little squished, a little bit closer together, so it smooths out the signal. So that's my guitar track here. Um, you'll also note that I've got a second track, and you'll also note that these tracks are grouped together in a track stack. So kind of cool. So um, the second track is a preset from Logic Pro 10 called Jungle Delay. It's a track preset. So I went ahead and selected that. I'll let you explore that if you do have Logic Pro on your own. It's a pretty cool preset. And what is occurring here is that the guitar track itself is feeding into Jungle Delay via a bus. So it's actually set up as a bus. And you can see here in the, uh, the guitar track, the bus is powered on and the signal is probably, woo, what about two thirds, maybe almost three quarters of the way of the signal is actually being sent through the bus. And the jungle delay has two components to it. The first component is another overdrive. So we've already added an amp with a little bit of dirt. Now we're going to use the Overdrive plugin from Logic Pro. And you can see it's cranked up a little bit. The tone is all the way up, so it does affect all the frequencies. Let's go ahead and listen to the overall signal with the Overdrive on. Let me go ahead and turn that off now. Actually, I'll turn it on and off, just you'll, you'll hear the difference. So 
So it adds a little more grit, a little more presence to the uh, to the overdrive um, aspect of the signal. All right, now the magic for the multiple uh, guitar part simulation. We're going to use the delay designer. And this is a big part of this jungle delay preset. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything off except for the delay. And let's listen to the effect itself, and then I'll talk about it. All right, kind of interesting there, isn't it? As, as you look at the setup of the delay, I uh, don't have time to go into every single setting. I'll let you explore that on your own. But you'll note that there are actually five delay taps defined. And they're obviously all at different delay times. So the shortest tap is at 250 milliseconds. Tap B is at 1500, 1.5 seconds. C is at 1750. 2000 for D, and the fifth tap, E, is all the way over at 3.5 seconds or 3,500 milliseconds. What you'll also note is that these taps are all synchronized to the, um, the tempo. And the tempo for my uh, project here is set to 120 BPM. The third thing I'd like to draw your attention to is that each tap is set to shift the pitch of the delay. So if we look at tap number three, which is tap C, you will see that the transpose, the transposition is 12 steps, actually negative 12 steps, which was one octave below the original signal. Then you'll see that tap B, or the second tap, is six steps above the original signal. And again, this is only the delay, right? Not the dry signal itself. This is all in the delay. Uh, tap D or 4 is negative 6 steps. So again, below the original signal. So pretty interesting there. And then, there we go. So then tap, um, tap E really is just a little bit. It's 9 cents off, just, just a tiny bit detuned. So this is what is going to give us the simulation of multiple guitar parts. The uh, all five delay taps are in sync with the tempo. So you'll hear that they play, you know, in time, so to speak. And they're all transposing the original pitch of the guitar into different areas. One octave below, six steps above, six steps below, and everything is a little bit detuned. So let's take a listen to the entire signal together with all of the effects turned on. So the gate, the amp model, channel EQ, compressor, and on the bus, the overdrive. A lot of stuff. Let's listen to it. All right, you can hear that kind of fade out there over a few seconds. That, that's kind of cool. So we've got a little bass line going on with that low B string. And then the other strings I'm playing are delayed, uh, obviously, and delayed in different pitches. So it ends up sounding like some crazy ensemble of guitars. The next thing I did was add a drum part. Let's go ahead and listen to what the entire package sounds like. I don't know. I don't think anybody who's into house music is going to want to dance to that, but I think it's kind of interesting. All right, the, uh, the only other thing I did was add a little stereo width to the guitar itself. Um, the preset itself really kind of gives you a mono signal. 
So for the uh, stereo image, I actually went outside of Logic and used a paid plugin from Waves called Real ADT Auto Automatic Double Tracking. And I used that to create some stereo width. So let me turn that on and let's listen to the guitar part. <laughs> All right. With that, uh, with the ADT effect, you really do get width, and you really do get, I feel like you get more of the, of the impression of multiple guitars playing. Logic Pro continues to impress me with some of its capabilities and some of its flexibility for manipulating guitar signals. So I would encourage you to, if you do have Logic Pro, to experiment with this, to play around, to be creative. And I will see you, as always, on the next video.